What do you feel when people reject everything you say just because they can't accept your identity? Well, um, in terms of personal feelings, I don't feel personally hurt or any way. I just feel like, well, any conversation with them was fairly pointless because if that's the only reason why you're going to reject what somebody says because they're not Jesus or you don't believe they're Jesus when they're saying they are, then I, I suggest to the person it's not a very good reason to reject anything. Like, I, I don't reject them because they're not Jesus. So why would they reject me if they believe I'm not Jesus? Like, it doesn't make any logical sense to me. So my personal feelings are probably just one of uh, feeling a bit sorry for them, in fact, because I just feel sorry for anybody who rejects truth just because the person giving it isn't the person they want them to be. Or they reject truth because the person giving it doesn't meet their addictions and demands. Or the person uh, who's telling them the truth is not the person they hoped the person would be. Like, it's sad that anybody would reject truth on any of those bases. So I, I feel that uh, rejecting the truth for any of those reasons is not a good reason to reject truth. So for that reason, I accept truth from children because sometimes it's beautiful accepting the truth from children. Like, you, it is the truth and what they're saying to you is the truth. I accept people, truth from people who I know are just bitterly angry with me sometimes because I know, well, what they're saying is the truth. And I don't, I don't have any feeling they have to be something before I'll accept the truth from them. But there is this great feeling on this planet that you have to be someone important before people will listen to you. And I find that's pretty sad. Mm. Because it, why do you have to be someone important before anybody will listen to you? Like it doesn't make any sense to me either. Logically, we're all children of God. Therefore, we're all equal. Therefore, each of us have a valid thing to say, right? And, and unless, and the more we say that's harmonious with love, the more valid it is. The less we say harmonious with love, then the less valid it is. It doesn't matter what they claim themselves to be. What matters is whether it's valid from a consideration of love or not. That's really the only real point of questioning, I feel, about whether you should receive something. Is, is it loving? Is the concept loving? Is it logical? Is it loving? Then you would accept it no matter where it's from. So I feel that uh, people's reasons for, for doing that are fairly, you know, again, Ill illogically conceived. Mm. Mm. Okay. And I believe, though, that uh, for the majority of people, they have a strong desire to reject truth just because it's going to cause some of their own personal fears to be exposed. And rather than have their personal fears exposed and then have it have to be felt, they would prefer to have their personal fears suppressed. And the way to suppress fear is to tell a person a lie. So it's one of the main methods that we use on the planet in order to suppress a person's fear. So in a previous question, you talked about the fat woman's backside or the woman's fat backside, shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the fear she has is that she has got a fat backside. And the fear she has is that she doesn't look good like that. And the fear she has is that other people will make fun of her like that. And the fear, you know, these fears all add up. And so when she goes up to her husband and do you think I look fat in these jeans, She's got all these preconceived fears, whether they're valid or not, it's immaterial. She's got all these fears that she doesn't want to feel. And she's really asking her husband to allay the fear, to make the fear go away. And the majority of people who come up to question me are questioning me because they want their fear to go away. They don't want to know the truth. They want their fear to disappear. And I'm not in the business of making fear disappear. In fact, I want fear to be exposed. I want fear to be addressed. That's what God wants. That's what all of God's laws are. are, are all God's laws are love-based and there is no fear in love. So all of God's laws are fearless and I would like people to address their fears. And so I'm not going to help a person, you know, sit in their fear. And I'm not going to say things to them that are going to help them do that. And a lot of people are very confronted with that. 
one of the things with regard to people terminating their friendship with me or rejecting things that I say, and a lot of times it is like a physical termination of the friendship. So they enter a friendship, a dialogue with me, they be, we become friends over time. Then I say something that generally confronts them and then they decide they're going to terminate their friendship and they write me a termination letter generally where they say, I, I, I no longer want to have anything to do with you because I don't believe you're Jesus. That's their termination letter mm -hmm. <laughs> that I receive mm -hmm. frequently from people. And unfortunately, most of the time, they are not honest with themselves. The very reason why they terminate their friendship with me, why they send me their termination letter, is because of reasons I've already exposed to them during my conversations with them, that they are unable to confront within themselves emotionally, that they're unable to accept emotionally. And often the very reason why they are terminating their friendship with me is the very reasons why I've, uh, that I've already explained to them over the years that I've known them as to why they have a problem. So could you give us an example of that? Um, yes, I would probably give you many examples of that. <clears throat> Usually, within a very short period of time of knowing a person, they ask me, you know, what is going on for their lives personally. And usually I tell them what's going on in their life personally because they ask me and they seem to display a willingness to know. Of course, most of the time they're not really wanting to know. They just want me to say good things. Now, I'm willing to say good things if good things are there, but I'm also willing to say bad things if bad things are there. And that's what they don't understand. Uh, but the average person doesn't do that. So I tell them what's going on. So, for example, I gave one fellow, one fellow came to me and said, oh, look, I want to be your friend. And I said, well, look, it's impossible for me to be your friend because you're not real. You're faking your life constantly. Every interaction that I have with you is just a fake interaction. You don't, you're not real with any emotion. You don't have any emotions that are real that I can feel inside of you. And I, then I gave an example. See, right at the moment I said, now that I said that to you, you're in a rage with me. And you're not even acknowledging that. Anyway, that man drove off. Right? And then he was about, he said later, he was about 15 k's away from me and he got into this huge rage with me and he wanted to kill me and he wanted to... And he spent two or three hours driving home wanting to kill me. He didn't see me for another five months as a result of that one conversation. He came back to me and told me how angry he was with me. And I said, but have you dealt with the fact that you're not being real? And he hadn't. And I said, are you going to? And to this day, he's now not coming to any sessions. He doesn't have anything to do with me. He wanted to be my friend, he said. He has nothing to do with me now. He's still angry with me and wants to kill me. He's told me on many occasions that he wants to kill me, <laughs> actually. Now, I find that, that whole experience, and that's a sort of extreme example of a person who has demonstrated to me right from the beginning what their true nature is. And I've told them right from the beginning what their true nature is. They haven't wanted to accept it right from the beginning. And now they don't spend any time with me for what they believe is, you know, the I'm not Jesus. So um, you're saying this person now in their rage, they're still not being real. They're just in a rage about you challenging them about not being real. Exactly. They're just in a rage about me challenging them about the fact that they're not real. And the fact is he wasn't real because if he wanted to be my friend, he wouldn't be in a rage with me for nearly five years now. Right? He wouldn't be in a rage with me. He, he, he would want to be my friend and therefore want to work through why he's in such a rage with me being a good friend to him, telling him the truth about himself, mm -hmm. right? He would want to work through that. So right from the beginning, I knew what the problem was, right? And this is frequently the case, that the people who send me their termination letters, I frequently know the exact reason why they're actually sending me their termination letter, and it's not because I'm not Jesus. It's because they don't like me, and they don't like what I said. Mm. And they don't like it and they don't like me because I told them the truth and they don't want to hear the truth. That's the main reason why. So you're saying it's often at some point in your 
you can't really call it a friendship because you're saying that they don't like you. But no, some well, point that's right. In your, right from the beginning, they really haven't liked me. At some point in your relationship with these people, you've raised something mm-hmm. that ultimately become comes to a head. And when that comes to a head, either with you or in some aspect of their personal, their, life. Their personal life, and you reflect the truth about that, yep. then they don't want to have anything to do with you. No. I can certainly vouch for that. I mean, I observe that all the time. It happens with me now too. Well, you like, think of it all the time. You didn't want to have anything to do with me. It was pretty much the same, wasn't it? Certainly. certainly. I was personally challenged. Every yeah. single time. And yep. you just wanted to walk away. You wanted to go away. And then, to your credit, you walked away, went around, and you went, he's right, I'm a... And you know what I mean. You you had this feeling in you of uh, of, of at least some degree of self honesty. But the average person I find doesn't have that. They have no degree of self honesty. They don't want to examine themselves honestly, and so they would just want to blame somebody for mm. what they do. I feel to the people's credit who stay, the majority of them have a larger degree of self honesty. They. They have a desire to see themselves as they truly are, even though it's painful at times. And, and that's the exact same desire I have for myself, mm-hmm. the desire to see myself as truthfully are, even though it's painful at times for me too. You know, that's the reality. That's the reality any time we walk towards God. God's going to expose our true nature to ourselves. And it's just whether we can emotionally be humble enough to deal with it as to whether we will stick in this desire to have a relationship with God or not. That's the primary thing driving our desire. Mm -hmm. So for the average person, they don't have that desire. They don't have this strong desire to be at one with God. They don't have a strong desire to have personal reflection of truth. And so they want people to tell them lies. And when you tell them the truth, they view that as a mortal sin, which they will remain angry about until they see that you were right. And until they see that it's not very loving to be angry, and until they see that once they get over their anger that actually they had a lot of fear about the answer, and until they actually feel their fear and feel the grief that is their fear covers, they probably are not going to shift on the issue. Mm. Mm. Mm.